Let's begin at the Charles Douglas International Airport. We have an hour to kill, and we don't necessarily know what to do, so we're going to walk down to Concourse A to see what we can get at the duty-free. However, we notice that the walls around us are moving. This is Interconnected, a new media installation art piece by Rafik Anantal, created out of 850 linear feet of LED lights. This art piece displays the invisible patterns that surround us. Today, I would like to introduce New Media Art, which is the art that is available to us because of the technology that we have. It's art that's developed through computers. It's really, really hard to understand New Media Art because technology has become so integrated into our daily lives that we don't necessarily know how to analyze it, how to have a, some critical thinking about it, and how to ultimately understand what we're seeing. So today, I invite you to play hide and seek with New Media Art. An analysis of Interconnected by Mr. Anadol might allow us to comprehend the definition for new media art. New media art is created through code. The artist is going to be using data to develop a code to transform it into an algorithm to later visualize it into a beautiful aesthetic piece. Interconnected is only a facade of the art piece. It's demonstrating the code of Mr. Anadol. What we're seeing is the invisible patterns that are only captured through radars and computers. The data that Mr. Anadol uses is going to be taken from departures, flights that are incoming, baggage claim, security, even the traffic that's outside the airport. And it's going to be displayed into this beautiful light work. So today, we're going to be looking at how new media art is going to be addressing the concept of technology. Since we have already established a definition of new media art in that it creates, it's created through code, it manipulates data, and it transforms that data into a visual, I would like to introduce I Am Listening Post by Mark Hansen and Ben Rubin. It's another new media installation art piece that was created in 2003, and it's now presented at the Whitney Museum. I am. I am. I'm by. I am. I'm off. I am 18M. Ready. I am. So Listening Post is a new media installation that takes data from unrestricted internet forums and transforms it into a display of different um, screens that are, are read out loud with a voice synthesizer. What we're seeing is the interconnections of different people that are just interacting online. And so we have two choices. When we enter this trance-like immersive experience, we can either self-identify with the truths that are being displayed on the art piece, repeating over and over, I am, I am, I am. The other option is to actually interact with the multiple identities that are in this art piece. We're going to create a dialogue with them by exploring who we are in this space at a given time. So at the end of the day, I Am Listening Post is going to be an experience that allows us to create a live narrative where identity is not only ours, but also the identity of the artist. And these identities that are taken from online forums are going to be interacting with each other. But what would happen if the artist's purpose is to actually change the program to become an artist itself? I would like to recall the words of American philosopher John Searley, who says that the appropriately programmed computer with the right inputs and outputs would thereby have a mind in exactly the same sense human beings have a mind. The correct simulation is a mind. I Am the Painting Fool is going to be a computer program created by Simon Colton that is going to be exploring the concept of identity by becoming an artist for itself. Let me read this very dismal self-description of the computer program. I am the painting fool, a computer program, and an aspiring artist. The aim of this project is for me to be taken seriously one day as a creative artist in my own right. I have been built to exhibit behaviors that might be deemed as skillful, appreciative, and imaginative. 
My work has been exhibited in real and online galleries. The ideas behind my conception have been used to address philosophical notions such as emotion and intentionality in non-human intelligences. So this new media art piece is going to be transforming the way that we understand identity by becoming an artist in and on of itself. What we're seeing on screen is two ways in which the painting fool has transformed this notion of philosophy in order to understand emotions. The painting fool is able to capture those emotions into the artwork that we're seeing today. I would like to pinpoint a key word here, which is going to be mimesis. Throughout the history of art, we've seen marble sculptures, oil paintings, photographs, impressionist brow strokes, and now computers pulling every single stunt to achieve mimesis. Mimesis is being able to capture the essence of human beings. And the painting fool is trying to do just that. It's trying to achieve mimesis by understanding emotions. And so on screen, we see two examples. One example of an audience member interacting with a painting fool that is expressing anger. And so the painting fool is attempting to understand that emotion by transforming that image into a portrait that is distortion and has a gray scale. On the other hand, we see another audience member interacting with a painting fool through happiness. And so this emotion is going to be transformed into a new media art piece that is going to be visualizing happiness through line and color. Now, computer programs are questionably not creative, but in this sense, we're seeing creativity unfold through new media art. I mean, computer programs have similar restrictions than human beings do. Any human artist gets creative blocks. We struggle when we're in front of a piece of blank paper or a blank piece of canvas. We don't necessarily know what to do when our skills are not up to the level of the artists around us. The painting fool is just the same. They are restricted by the program that they, has been designed by Simon Colton. They are restricted by the skills program into the code. They are restricted in a way that are, is very human. Ultimately, both artists and computers can create beautiful pieces of art. This is how identity unfolds through the painting fool. Now, what would happen if we have no artists at all? This is a question for Mert, the Samay living artist. Neuroengineer M. Porter and his team developed a computer program that interacts with a set of neurons that is going to be interacting later on with a machine that paints. Let me introduce Mert to you. Mert is basically going to be establishing a genetically engineered artist that is capable of learning and memory. It's going to be transforming that interaction between code and brain into an art piece that is made out of marker and a simple piece of paper. Obviously, the aesthetic qualities here are not necessarily what we're looking for, but rather that interaction between something that we have created, a brain that we have created, and a machine. So the philosophical notions of this art piece are going to be questioning the way that we understand art overall, how we understand the definition of art, how we understand the identity of an artist. When we see Mert, we see similar qualities to human beings. This conglomeration of rat, uh, rat cortical cells is going to be dying. They live. You have to sustain them with food. And they even leave behind the body of work for us to appreciate, just like any human artist does. So technology, art, philosophy, we've seen emotions, identity, and memory become merged to create new media art. So to conclude, I would like to examine how the audience is going to be playing a role in the development of new media art for the purpose of preserving identity. This is Mission Eternity, a piece by eToy Corporation that has the purpose of becoming a cult of the dead. Again, I would like to pinpoint the word mimesis here because this art piece is attempting to capture what it is to be human. The objective of Mission Eternity is to create ultra long-term conservation capsules called M Arcanum capsules that are going to be able to digitize identity for eternity you can become a part of this too. These ultra-long conservation capsules are going to be uh, created by the digitation of fragments of life. Anything from your breath, your laughter, your testament, your CV, any contacts that you have on your cell phone, any text message that you've sent, your playlist from Spotify, and even the things that you carry in your pocket on a daily basis are going to be digitized to create an 
eternal identity for you after you die. And you can participate too. You can become an M angel by donating 50 megabytes of your disk space in order to create and conserve identity on your hardware. So now that we have understood how identity becomes preserved, Mission Eternity becomes a collaborative space where the audience can interact with the art piece in order to be able to preserve identity. So when Human thinking becomes parallel and analogous to programming. The product itself mirrors the human mind. The qualities of computer show us that we are able to achieve mimesis through new media art. Because when identity becomes transformed, visualized, contested, new media art becomes more like us. Thank you so much.